Hello folks, Deadset here. And today we are going to be doing some whistling while we work. Um, the picture that you saw before you was a dress, a Japanese woman in a dress. And I know some people have problems modeling clothing, but it's really easy. You do it the same way you do it in modern um, in Marvelous Designer. You create a pattern. Pattern. <laughs> what am I British? You create a pattern and you basically wrap it around the character um, for this of course as always I'm using Lightwave 3D um, dead program yes but still very awesome program in and, and if it ain't broke don't try to fix it So as you can see here, um, basically I created just a square and I'm wrapping it around the body. And now the main thing here is to make sure that you have enough polygons for it to conform to the body. You're not trying to get it absolutely perfect because what I'm going to do is heat shrink it to the body. But I need to make sure I have enough polygons for conformity before I move it on to the next step. So these are the early low poly steps. And it's really simple, you know, kiss it, meaning keep it easy, stupid. Don't overthink it. Just make your shapes and keep it moving. Don't overwrap and don't have too many deformities in the polys. Try to avoid non planners. You know, it's common sense stuff. And for those who are not used to polygon modeling, or if you're doing everything in ZBrush and you're just going back and doing reef topology, oh man, I hate it for this generation. Polygon modeling was the best, and I think it's a skill that should never have been neglected. So if you're neglecting your polygon modeling, you may want to go back and get some practice. And as you can see, it's just mirroring, adding stuff. I'm about to complete the underside. Now the dress, I'm not trying to get it exactly like what was seen in the picture. I just need it to be close. Now to give you some backstory on this character's design, um, for the new project that I'm working on, what I decided to do was, and something I had been trying to do for a long time, what I decided to do was scale back. And I finally got a nice good coherent story which is entertaining that is true to the Primark universe in which I did not have to go all the way back to the drawing board that I could you know reuse the characters that I was using in my previous project with some minor additions and I go ahead and you know build something and this won't take near as long to produce um, I no longer have any help because when I stopped um, you know everybody whom I was working with just lost interest in the project and that was expected but they also knew what I was going through, what I was going through at the time so Okay, and we want the skirt to flare out a bit. As you can see, I've, um, this part is just, you know, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing I want to do is make sure that the underlying 
polygons in the layer below it are not you know, bulging through. And I know this looks tedious, but actually it's kind of fun because you can actually cool out and do this, you know, while you're listening to music or while you're listening to um, an iPad, what you call it, a podcast, or, you know, I sometimes do audio books while I'm doing this. It's, it's a very relaxing, very, you know, cool out type of thing, modeling this way. Okay, so I'm going to make it slightly larger. And, and there we go. We got all the polygons and there's the heat shrink. And with the heat shrink in the areas that don't conform, well, you do get those types of deformations. So there's going to be some cleanup. But, you know, it's, it's not hard because the only thing I do is I use Third Power's um, LW brush. So it's got a smoothing brush in there. However, a smoothing brush won't help for deformations that are that bad at the hem of the dress. So I'm just gonna have to go in and move polygons around. And it's just a matter of removing the chaos and getting them ordered. Now take note of what Heat Shrink did here. I mean, if you look at her booty, Heat Shrink did a great job on the dress in getting that part of the dress to be defined by her booty. And that's exactly why I like using it. So I'm going to make it a little bit shorter because. Well, here's the belt. I'm going to work on that. I need a break. I didn't want to use a sash belt like what was found in the picture because that would just be too much work. I didn't really need to do all of that. Just a break between the top and the bottom is all I needed. Very nice. Bring that out a little bit. Make it a little bit shorter so that once I use the dynamics, it won't fall too short. It's got to be Sexy, but somewhat conservative. That's the look that I'm going for. Okay, now we're into ZBrush. And since I do cell shading, um, I like the detailing that comes with wrinkles. So, in general, I use ZBrush to UV map and sculpt onto the model. There's my UV map. There's that nice heat shrink booty definition. If you notice this character, um, she's not really heavy in the upper body. I think when doing young characters, like this character is like right, right at the cusp of 18 years old. So um, one way to keep especially a female form, female form looking young and supple is to not overdo the assets. I'm gonna add some of the wrinkles. Now, for those of you who think that doing these types of wrinkles is just throwing some random squiggly lines in there, you are sadly mistaken. There is an understanding of the physics of clothing and how they deform on the body based on you know what a person's assets are, whether they or their size and shape, whether they're fat, whether they're fit, what have you. So this it took me about a year to finally get clothing wrinkles done satisfactorily. And you know nowadays it's I've been doing it so much that. You know, I barely even have to think about it because I know how clothing should deform when they're laying on the body, where the stress points are, where the pull points are, which are the stress points, and where they should relax. And it's just a, 
it's just a matter of using like relief and then um, relief strokes and pull strokes or extra strokes as you can see I'm using a standard brush um, there was no need to use something like the clay brush because I would end up having to overly smooth and that's not what I wanted to do so I just grabbed the pinch brush and that's just to top off the wrinkles to randomize and make some sharper than the others and some more rounded or leave the others more rounded Now I'm going to run into problems with this model um, and it's going to be bleed through but, but that's something that's easily corrected. And the reason why I'm doing this in separate, um, well the, the reason why I did not bring the underlying model into ZBrush is because it wasn't really necessary. This dress is going to be, um, have dynamics applied to it so that it flows physically the way a dress is supposed to flow and so all the other corrections that I need to make they're going to be made in light wave now what I'm doing is I'm defining the dynamic part of the dress which is the hanging part and I wanted not really a pleated look but I wanted I wanted it to hang differently not straight but it's cut would have a lot of material at the bottom so that when it did hang it would fold over each other and I like that natural sort of sundress look I find it to be very appealing um, sundresses are one of the, my favorite things for women to wear whether it's the short ones or the long ones it's just very appealing it's very feminine and it really makes a woman and the look that I was going for with this character was you know sort of a Japanese girl next door type of thing I wanted her to show her age but at the same time have the vitality of youth as you know she is an 18 year old character Um, if you're wondering where the inspiration for this character came from, I had another Japanese character that I did, but she was a bit older, and so therefore um, I couldn't reuse the face because it did not fit the appeal that I was going for. So I had to do some, you I know, mean, I had to do some research, and I did run across a character. Um, there's a show on Netflix called The Good Morning Call and I started watching that it wasn't the only one I started watching but I started watching lots of Japanese movies and the funny thing about looking for Japanese movies especially the Asian movies on Netflix like the internet and everything else they will mix Korean with Japanese with Chinese and then oh my gosh it just annoys me to no end so when I put in Japanese movies in the search engine of Netflix I get everything and so what I did was I went online and I looked up the actress Haruko Fukuhara who was the girl who played in Good Morning Call and um, again to Google's nonsense it did the same thing that Netflix did however with the specifics I was able to you know go directly to her imagery and she just has this classic Japanese beauty that and youth that I was looking for so I did not copy the character I just used her as a guidepost to create my own character from scratch. Now here I'm creating the polka dots and 
you're probably asking, they're just polka dots. Why don't you just download a polka dot pattern off of the Internet? Well, my friend, let me tell you about copyright and the people who are waiting for us to do things like that. Let's just say I finished my project and it I don't know, I started making some money with it. Well, the thing is, polka dot textures are so ubiquitous. And there are people out here who do this. Um, with ubiquitous textures like that, you have scabs, scammers who would just, you know, claim copyright saying that you copied their image or some type of nonsense. And then, you know, with no proof at all, they'll just... Let's say if I had some success, they could tie you up in litigation. But the whole point is they just want to pay off so they can go away. I get around all of that by creating my own textures and then showing videos of how I created my own textures. And textures aren't hard to do. I mean, like, this is polka dots. I create a bunch of circles over a black background. That's it. Same thing for my ink lines or whatever the case may be. It's really no headache but it is a good practice to do this just to avoid future litigation from those individuals who will throw things at the wall and see what sticks and try to you know steal some of your hard earned money through lawsuits so i'm not going to go so much into how to apply textures to the character because I went over that in a previous video but I'm just going to render this out set the background to black and the only thing I have to do is set my camera to square and then make the texture repeatable like so and there we have it a repeatable pattern of polka dots and it's mine you saw me create it so we'll save that out and then go ahead and apply this texture to my finished dress. I come with imperfections when you look at me, you see the soul through my flesh, you something special. No, you looking bomb the way you dress and gone flex and hold it still and let my mind digest. You got the leverage. Okay, there's a dress in Z brush. I'm not going to apply it here in Z brush. Add a few things here there, but I don't think I'm going to apply this texture in Z brush. And one thing. Because I am using cell shading, it is a good practice to make sure you have very deep reliefs so that they will come across um, clearly in your cell shading. Now the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to save the files. Now usually what I do is I save about five different versions or five different resolutions of this file the base number of polygons is about 1100 so when I save that file I'll save it um, like I said sundress and behind it I will put the polygon the number of polygons that are there so that will be sundress ZBR this should be 1148 the next one should be 4482 the next one should be 17,702, which is good for close ups. And the next one should be 70,350. And this is like the Uber close up stuff. So I do this because if the character is far away, I don't need to go through all of those render cycles, especially if I'm using dynamics. So I will use the lower resolution dress in those. 
in those scenes with you know a UV map. So let's go ahead and apply the polka dots to the dress. As you can see, I've exported it over into Lightwave and I'm using the 17,702 model. So let's give this surface a name. It goes, you know, short dress. Make it double sided. And let's apply it to my Japanese girl model. There we are, and there she is. And there's the bleed through that I was talking about. Um, I'll clean that up later. I'm not really concerned about it right now. But I do need to check some seams here, make sure that everything's kosher, um, that there are no artifacts, things along those lines. Okay, and those wrinkles look pretty good, so. Because I want continuity between the skin and the dress, I'm not going to start the dress from scratch. I'm just going to copy the skin over to the dress like that. And it gives us an idea of what it's going to look like in its cell shade, which is not bad. Not bad at all. So there's our polka dots. We're going to go ahead and apply that to the dress. Um, you have to excuse me when it looks like nothing's going on because I have a three monitor set up. So let me slide things over like this. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna make all of that black. Let's drop that in there like that. And there it is. Good deformations on the UV map. And I'm going to do some experimenting. Um, maybe add some textures like a bump map. Or maybe a transparency map just to see what it's going to look like if the dress was slightly transparent you know, maybe slightly see-through um, like I said it's, she's sort of a you know a Japanese girl next door um, conservative yet you know kind of hot young got sort of an innocent appeal but I mean, she's a warrior girl so looks can be deceiving but let's go ahead and experiment a little bit with some of these textures and see what I can come up with no I don't like that let me try something else It seems to be doing okay. Oh, I really don't like that. Maybe mapping is not working well. This looks promising. Oh gosh, there are UV errors around the belt, so I don't like that. I think I'm going to be making it plain. I won't be using any bump maps or anything like that, just flat color. And that doesn't look bad. Having it see through 
Well, I can try a little bit of transparency without a texture. Have you ever watched an event, movie, or television show and thought to yourself, hmm, if it was me, I would have done X or Y. Well, this is my Monday morning quarterbacking turned into action. You see, I love comic books, graphic novels, and all styles of animation, whether it's from the East or the West. I grew up on classic Disney, Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera, and the like. I've read classic comic books from DC, Marvel, and later Image, Cross-Gen, Vertigo, and other less popular brands. This is my attempt to bring back classic artwork and deep narratives free of modern day social and political correctness influences. Welcome to Dead Set Enemy. 